What is going on, guys? Welcome to episode number 63 of our Cincinnati Reds franchise. And in today's episode, we have the one game 2021 National League wildcard game against the St. Louis Cardinals. So interdivision opponent, big time rival for the Reds. It's going to be gritty. It's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough actually for us because this is actually a pretty good Cardinals baseball club here and taking on the Giants just a few days, just a few short days ago in a one game playoff, a lot of stress on these players. It's definitely going to be a very tough game to to win here. So we can see here that Jesse Winker is leading us off. He's actually going to get out on a fly ball. Then we get Trey Turner batting in the number two hole. I mean, he's going to get on with a base hit single. Here's Joey Votto. Look at his numbers. He hit 300 with 22 home runs. So he actually he had, had a pretty solid season to say the least here. But we're going to have Trey Turner pushing the center fielder, the young center fielder, Harrison Bader, to make a good throw. He did make a good throw. It just wasn't very timely. So we're going to get runners on first and third, and Paven Smith is going to come up as the number four hole hitter, and he's going to end up striking out here. This is Alex Reyes, guys, by the way, on the mound, and he is definitely taking a big step forward in his young career for this Cardinals baseball team here. But check out Nick Senzel's numbers, guys. 91 ribbies, 24 home runs, hit 285. He had a really good season, and but this is what he does. He does this a lot. Likes to take the ball the other way, likes to shoot it out to the opposite side of the field. Sometimes he flies out, and that's what he does here in the top of the first. So bottom of the first, we are going to get one pitch and one out. That is Luis Castillo taking the mound in this must-win game. I like his I like his chances here. I mean, Luis Castillo is technically our best overall pitcher uh, in this rotation. I mean, we've got Dallas Keuchel, Carlos Carrasco. We've also got Hunter Green up in here. So we've definitely got a lot of guys in this rotation that can do a lot of things. But, you know, Luis Castillo, as good as he is, he has moments like that. And especially against Paul DeYoung, the guy is a home run threat every single time he takes swings in the batter's box guys i mean he can launch anything you throw at him he's a really good hitter you get, definitely got to watch out for him so unfortunately we give up that first run of the game off a home run by paul de Jong there solo shot and fortunately though inning is over so that's all the damage that we're going to have done against our pitching staff here so we're down one nothing here in the top of the third reyes walks jesse winker it's going to lead to Trey Turner coming up, and he's going to swing and miss off a pretty nasty off-speed pitch there by Reyes. So we got two down, 50 pitches, guys. 50 pitches, by the way, in the third inning. So uh, Mr. Reyes is getting worked, getting worked. So hopefully, hopefully this can turn out to be some good things and pay some dividends here as we get later on in this game. The further that those pitchers start to wear and tear on their arm and during the game get fatigued, it's it's only gonna bode well for us. But look at this throw. Look at this throw. With two down in the inning, stealing, stealing a stolen base attempt here, and check out Tyler Stevenson. Boom, from his knees. From his knees. Absolutely filthy throw here, guys. And check out Marcel Ozuna. So we're starting to see some defense being played here in this game. Started off early with a little bit of offense, and now it's kind of becoming that pitcher's duel type of thing. Look at Ozuna yet again. That's Taylor Trammell going to shoot a little opposite field fly ball out there to Ozuna, but he's going to make the play. we got Scooter Jeanette here on second base, and Luis Castillo is going to try to lay a bunt down with 0-2. We, we know how important this run is right now, guys, because these runs are coming at a premium, it looks like. So even though we got 70 pitches on Alex Reyes right now, He's starting to he's starting to walk a few guys, right? He's definitely got some control issues. So Winker promptly makes him pay. So we waited him out. We waited him out, and he's going to send that ground ball right past uh, Paul DeYoung over there at third base. And we're going to get an RBI. So we're going to get back up here on the board. It's going to be one to nothing, and Scooter Jeanette cannot handle this easy lineout. And Paven Smith also bobbles the baseball out there in right field. So Yonder Alonso is going to get on for a base hit. So. I mean, fortunately, that wasn't going to cost us any extra bases, but check this out. The next batter goes over Taylor Trammell's head in the gap for a double. 
Colton Wong is going to come up to bat in the pitcher spot. So we're going to end up walking him. So it was actually a good move by Cardinals, Cardinals manager there because obviously, you know, we're not going to walk the pitcher, right? So we're going to walk Colton Wong. Now it's got bases loaded situation. And with a left-hander up to bat, actually switch hitter up to bat, we're going to get Danny Norris, our lefty, going up against this switch hitter. And guys... He's not a very good switch hitter. Like, okay, so against left-handers, he's not very good from either side. So that's why we're going with Danny Norris here. But you can see he's challenging this batter here on a one-and-one -one count, two pitches in, fastball right down the middle, taking, probably looking for something else here. And now the pressure's cooking, guys. One and two with three pitches and a ground ball out there to Senzel. Got to make a good throw, though. He does, and it's just in time. Just in time. So Senzel and Vado hook up for that out. Good job by Norris to shut down the Cardinals offense in a major, major jam. So Castillo only allows one run so far on his ledger and he is done for the day. So we get Nick Senzel coming up to bat here in the top of the sixth inning. Jack Flaherty is now out on the mound so we do have a change of pitcher and check out Nick Senzel. Go! It's not going to get over the over the wall, but it is going to bounce off the wall. So Sinzel is in there for a double, a two out double. So now we got a runner in scoring position here. We're only going to have really one shot at this to try to get this run in, guys. So Taylor Trammell got to come through right here. We need you, bud, with a two and one count. 15 pitches in. Flaherty throws a fastball right down the middle, and Taylor Trammell puts a charge into it, guys. But Harrison Bader is going to get there. He's just too fast out there in center field, and it just didn't have enough oomph behind it. So Taylor Trammell is out, and so are the Reds. We're going to go to the bottom of the sixth inning here. Paul DeYoung up yet again, and he's going to send a ground ball right past Nick Senzel out there. Winker makes a strong throw back into second base to cut off DeYoung and hold him to first. So going to go out to a little mound meeting here with one out. we got Jake Lamb coming up, and we need a ground ball. Trey Turner picks it. Throws it over to Jeanette, who tosses it over to Vado, and what a scoop by Joey Vado! And we got ourselves now. We got ourselves a brand new ball game here. One hit, actually five hits, one runs a piece. Top of the seventh, Jack Flaherty still out there. Tyler Stevenson going to come up, and he is going to send a long fly ball out there, right past Ozuna, back to the wall, to the warning track. He picks it up. He's going to toss it back in with the strong throw. But guys, Tyler Stevenson. Got to get on base here in scoring position. I like what we're doing here. So now we got Danny Norris coming up. We're going to pinch hit for a red hot outfielder, our fifth outfielder, Alfonso Anaya. This guy's an amazing hitter. A lot of contact here for him. Love me some Alfonso Anaya, but he's got to come through here, guys. We need a base hit big time. So come on, baby. What you got? Flaherty dealing on 0 and 0. Going to Toss a fastball right by him. So he's coming out here. He's challenging Alfonso Anaya. He says, you know what? You're a good hitter. Let's go. Mano y mano. So 0 and 1 count. Alfonso Anaya coming up. Strike two. He's going to swing and miss at yet again another fastball, but this time a little bit to the outside. What is Flaherty going to choose here? Probably something off speed, or is he going to challenge him yet again with that fastball? He challenges him with the fastball in the exact same location. You just got to tip your cap, guys. He just put him away. He just reared back and put Alfonso Anaya away. And he's still pretty young, guys. So uh, uh, Anaya's pretty young. You, you got to give him a little bit of credit for coming up here and trying to do a job. Jesse Winker going to come up after the number nine hitter. So he is leading this, this back off. And he's going to fly out to Marcelo Zuna. So inning is over. Michael Lorenzen going to come on now because we don't need Alfonso Anaya pitching, of course. And now we're going to get a fly ball out there to Joey Votto. Pass first base in foul territory. You're going to pick it up. So bottom of seventh, we start Lorenzen's night off. One pitch, one out. I like what we're doing here. And then Marcelo Ozuna going to be swinging at the first pitch again. So two pitches and potentially two out. So Sinzel makes that nice throw. We're going to get two. So two down here in the bottom of the seventh. And Yonder Alonso. Yonder Alonso comes up clutch, guys, with the home run in the bottom of the seventh. So it's going to be two to one, St. Louis, late in this baseball game. And guys, it's not looking too good right now. It's not looking too good. So we've got to pick ourselves up, pick our pitcher up here, get on base somehow, some way, any way that you can. And great play out there in right field 
to stop Trey Turner from getting on base and using his speed and his wheels. Two and two count on Joey Votto, and he is going to swing and a miss at another high fastball. The Cardinals are challenging the Reds hitters, guys, with that high fastball. It's either going to be inside, it's going to be high and up, or it's going to be out. doesn't really matter. Going to challenge them, and we haven't been able to handle it all game long. So check this, check this hit out by Paven Smith. A check swing, like a defense, a absolute defense swing right there. He's going to get on base, but Nick Senzel can't come through. Going to strike out, and we're going to go now to the bottom of the eighth inning where Lorenzen is still out there trying to get us out of here and get us still with a one-run deficit to go into the top of the ninth and give ourselves a chance here. But Winker trying to make a play, trying to make a play. Doesn't happen, guys. It's going to give up the extra base. Was a single. Going to give up that double now. So now we've got a pretty sticky situation here. So Brandon Finnegan's going to come on because we do like the on-deck batters against lefties. So Starling Castro, though, and he's going to do a job, and he's going to actually get a base hit double. That's an RBI going to come on through. It's going to be 3 to 1. And like I said, in the last inning, it's starting to get a little bit dicey. And he actually turned it into a triple. He turned it into a triple. So absolutely unreal. Now we're going to have to try to set up the intentional walk so we can get a double play possibility. We don't want Paul DeYoung lifting a fly ball out there to scoring, to scoring a run. So we do get Jake Lamb against the lefty Andrew Miller. Three and two count, full count with less than two outs. We got one down right here. And now Jake Lamb is just fighting off everything that Miller's throwing him, guys. Fastballs, sliders, change-ups. I mean, he's fighting them off. And then look at this. A little fly ball out there to Jesse Winker. He's going to camp under it. He's going to throw home. But he trips. He trips. And he can't throw it to the cutoff man. He cannot throw it to the cutoff man. And the run is going to score. So exactly what we didn't want to happen. Miller did everything that he possibly could to get Jake Lamb into a situation where we were going to get an easy out. That There's no way that he should have scored right there from third base, guys. There's no way. So Miller comes back with a strikeout, but it's going to be a little bit too late, I feel like. It's going to be 4-1 to one with Taylor Chamel coming up to bat. We do have Tyler Stevenson coming up on uh, double deck. And with this fly ball out here to center field. So Trammell is stinging the baseball here right now, guys, in this game, but just nothing to show for it at this point. So Scooter Jeanette going to come up as the second batter in this inning, and he's going to send a ground ball out there to second base. That is Starlin Castro, and he's going to toss him out. So it's going to be two down. Tyler Stevenson going to be the last hope to get on base, guys. We need it. Come on, Tyler. And a ground ball to third base to Jake Lamb. And, guys, that is going to be the end result of this baseball game. So the Reds are going to lose the one-game wild card. And honestly, you know, I kind of can't say that I didn't expect it. I mean, we had to win a bunch of games just to get here. I mean, we really earned we really earned our keep for the playoffs with that one-game wild card win against the Giants. Not wild card, but one-game uh, play-in a play-in game. And now we have to play the Cardinals here in this wild card game. And there you go. So the rest is history. So I'll see you guys in the off-season screen in just a few seconds. Well, guys, pretty disappointing loss here to our rival, NL Central rival, St. Louis Cardinals. We still got next season, though. We'll be okay. I think that this team has got a lot to look forward to. Um, I really do. When, when we look at the contract situation for next season, I mean, everybody's pretty much coming back. Nick Senzel definitely has to get re-signed. We've got Danny Norris going to be entering his final season. Jose Peraza is going to be entering his final season. Uh, Jesse Winker just signed a four-year deal. So, I mean, we're we're looking pretty good here. The only thing is, is that Paven Smith, Taylor Trammell, Molly Green, like you guys are noticing right now, and then we got Ryan Franks who's always, you know, going to be having to be re-signed because of those minor league deals. Uh, Tiger Barnhart probably, I mean, he can come back as a backup. Kendall Graveman, it's mostly the depth guys. Right, it's mostly the depth guys, mostly the minor league guys that are gonna have to get re-signed here. But most of the guys at the up at the top are gonna be coming back. So we got a pretty good situation here uh, heading into next season. So I'm gonna go ahead and advance, and 
we'll get into the off season, and then on next Friday's episode, we'll actually do one more round of the off season, and then from that point, we'll simulate we'll simulate the season two, and then get into the 2022. Hopefully, we make the playoffs in 2022, and uh, if not, we'll just go at it one more time. So, a couple more episodes left before the series officially ends. Hope you guys are really enjoying this thing. So let's go ahead and simulate to, actually let's simulate here in, up until the end of October so we can see who has advanced in the World Series. So the Blue Jays defeated the Braves in the 2021 World Series. That's awesome. The Blue Jays actually swept the Atlanta Braves in the World Series. So finally, Toronto, Toronto gets on the board for another World Series championship. They haven't been to the World Series since Joe Carter hit that home run and uh, and won it for them. So pretty cool, pretty cool. St. Louis actually made it all the way to the NLCS against Atlanta, took them to seven games. We also see that uh, Toronto really was the most dominant team in the playoffs for sure, and why wouldn't they be, guys? I mean, if we just look at their roster here uh, just real quick, you know, this team was – this team was loaded this season. I mean, you guys are well aware of this by now. They signed James Paxton last year, George Springer, Chris Sale two years ago, Rizzo two years ago, Vlad Guerrero Jr. is a beast. Yeah, I mean, this team this team really, really uh, stepped it up here. Steven Piscotti, Whit Merrifield, it just doesn't stop there, guys. You know, the Blue Jays, they really earned it uh, for sure. So let's go ahead and simulate into the offseason. <laughs> You're contracts with your manager, hitting coach, pitching coach, first base. So basically everybody, everybody needs to be re-signed. And we're looking at some retired players. So Joey Votto did not retire. He did not retire. But here's the deal. We're not bringing him back. Okay, guys? Just It's just not going to happen. Okay? He's just, he's too old. And I highly doubt that he's going to want to take a pay cut. Um, given his overall that he's probably going to have, it's going to cost us a lot of money for for us to bring him to bring him back. And, and maybe because he's not on contract, he's actually down here. Maybe we'll have to see. So nope, he did not end up retiring. So there's Troy Tulowitzki and Jose Urania. Um, so that's going to be that. So 2021 inductees: Miguel Cabrera. Wow! What? Wow! Wow! So. Miguel Cabrera going into the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. So early, so quick. Interesting, interesting. All right, so Joey Votto. Let's see what the Joey Votto situation is. He is, this is his final season. This is his final year on contract. This is his final year. Totally read that wrong, guys, apparently. Um, yeah, so maybe he's still on the books. We've got exclusive free agent negotiations. Our cash flow is at 158. That's been a little bit better, uh, considering some other years that we've had to do some negotiations. So that's going to be it for this episode, guys. I'm going to cut this off. It's going to be a nice, short, sweet episode. It sucks that we lost in the wild card round, but, you know, the, the team was in kind of a funky spot. You know, we made some progress. From the 2020 season for sure 2020 we didn't end up making the playoffs so it basically went like this the timeline has gone like this in the series didn't make the playoffs in the first year made the playoffs in 2019 had a miraculous season ended up getting hot winning the world series 2020 did not make the playoffs at all weren't even close to it we just really had a weird weird world series hangover type of year 2021 barely got in we had to win a bunch of games in order to do so and made it to the wild card round after a one game playoff beat the one game playoff game then we had to go into against the giants now we had to go on against the cardinals in another elimination game so back to back elimination games guys you know the odds are really not in your favor to uh to win those types of games right so and then we ended up losing so it's been basically kind of on and off on and off so hopefully 2021 offseason will be kind to us so that 2022 can come into good good stuff so we can come up with the playoffs again, right? So I'll catch you guys next Friday for the offseason for 2021. 
as we head into 2022. So pretty crazy to think that we're going to be pretty much three years ahead of where we're at in real life, but that's really where I wanted to go. I wanted to go and get a glimpse into the future and, and bring you guys along with me with this Reds slash rebuild type of deal. So, all right, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Leave a like if you like this thing, and as always, peace.